Hello, welcome back. This is L.A. Rathbone. It's been a while. This is part 10 of Slackware Series 2, Usage and Configuration of Slackware. In this episode, we will do one thing and one thing only. We will upgrade a kernel. And I'm still on Slackware 14.0 on this particular series. Slackware 14.1 just came out. And um, I'm thinking what I'll do after this uh, series is over. I will start a new series on how to upgrade Slackware. So that should be good. But for now, um, this is our final task for usage and configuration. So what we're going to do is there's been a kernel upgrade within Slackware 14.0, which doesn't happen in every Slackware release, but it does happen in this particular um, version of Slackware. So let's go to our boot uh, 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 directory, first of all. And let's do a bit of backing up here because Slackware is not like Red Hat, whereby each kernel has its own um, has its own unique thing. There's a package called kernel or what have you, and it will overwrite your old one, which is problematic if the kernel upgrade does not work. So what we want to do is keep some version of the um, kernel that we already have. So let's let's go ahead and copy our VM Linux dash, let's just copy them all just to make sure. Let's just copy them to root. That should be fine. Let's copy our init rid. Um, well, whoops. I forget what I did here. All right. Oh right, that was a backup, that other one. So the only one I'll keep is the initrid.gz to root. I must have done this before and practiced it. Let's get rid of the initrid3245. We don't need that right now. All right, so what we, we, we've done is we've copied our old kernels and our old initrid over to root. So now we want to run slack pkg update to get up to speed on the newest versions of everything, and I already am, so no, I don't want to download the other files. On slack pkg upgrade all. Now, there's lots of other upgrades um, since I last did my video. I, I'm sure they're all very nice, but I'm going to deselect all these using spacebar and focus on the kernel upgrades. So. Just leave the kernel entries starred and just uncheck everything else. Or you don't have to do that, but that's what I'm going to do in my video here. All right, I'm going to hit OK. It's going to do its thing. I'm going to take a pause break because this could take a while and meet you back here. All right, we're back. So the kernel upgrade has completed, and Slack package is saying to us that they highly recommend that we run Lilo now. Um, no, I don't think that's a very good idea because then it'll, because I'm, I'm guessing that the script has made some changes to our lilo.conf file um, in, in, in the sense that it's going to overwrite our old kernel. And no, I don't want it to replace that. I want to take a look at what we have. So in our boot folder, you'll notice that, that all of our VM Linux um, stuff has been replaced. Um, but if you look at our, so if you look at that VM Linux stuff now, it all goes back to May the 31st, um, which is when the upgrade occurred. But if you look at the initrid file, it goes back to um, an earlier time. So that was our old one that we created ourselves. So we really don't want to do that at this point in time. Let's take a look at our lilo.conf file. You see it's still giving us VM Linux, which is fine, but now our VM Linux is pointing to the new version. So let's send let's bring back our old stuff that we put into root. So we had our VM Linux stuff into root. And and you'll note that if we run MD5 sum on root initrid versus on the one that's in this particular folder. It's the same thing. Those all those crazy numbers at the beginning. We, that means we know. That means that we know it's the exact same file. So 
it didn't overwrite that in any way, shape, or form. So all we need to do is, to do is copy back our uh, root, sorry, VM Linux stuff into here. And now we have both versions of the kernel in our boot folder. So, and we have our old init red, but let's rename that for greater certainty. So we'll rename it to init red dash 3229.gz so that we know for sure which one it is. So let's, um, and then we will run our, our make init rig command generator. Ah, right. But um, we don't, uh, it's, it's still trying to use our old one because we're still, un we're still underneath um, the 3229, but we upgraded that kernel. So if we run help on that, it tells us what to do for um, the kernel version. So we are going to do it for um, 3245, but if you look at there's two different versions, so just be careful. If you're most people are going to want to run make init rig command, whoops, make init rig command generator dash k3245 dash smp. But again, we're on the virtual machine that does not support PAE emulation. So we're just going to do the 3245 3, command. And again, if you're running the 64-bit version, there is no SMP because all 64-bit kernels are SMP. So you just do it like this. Let's see what it gives us. That looks like a reasonable command. Let's copy that. Oh, one second. There we go. Let's copy that with um, GPM. Let's rename that to 3245.gz. Very good. And now we have our init rid 3229 and our 3245. Let's make a symbolic link from VM Linux 32. Whoops. Not VM init red three two four five. Let's just make it init red dot gz. Now if we look at now we've got our VM Linux linking to our three four two five SMP, but that, that, that's actually the wrong kernel for this system. So I actually need to change that link. I just noticed that now. LN dash SF VM three two four five. generic rather 3245 to VM Linux. Now if we look at VM Linux, it's pointing us to the right kernel. Um, so now we need to edit our lilo.conf file. Let's do that. This this setup now will give us Linux th um, will give us our 3245 kernel because um, VM Linux is a symbolic link that points to the 3245 3, kernel, and init rid is the command. It is the um, it, a symbolic link that points to the init rid for 3245 as well. So we're going to create. Let's call that Linux dash 3245. And let's copy this using yank y, and then we'll hit P to put it. And this will be VM Linux dash. Oh, what did I call it again? Dash generic dash three two two nine. So if I paste that like that, ugh, let's try that again. Why isn't that working? I'm copying it, and I middle click. There we go. Our image, is middle click. Ugh. Okay, fine. I'll just type it. There we go. And our knit rid is a knit rid. Oh, come on. Dash three two two nine. And let's rename this to 3229.
That looks like it should work. Now we run the Lilo command. Okay, you see that it added two entries, 3245 and 3229. So, um, actually, actually, you know what? I messed up. We can't use the generic 3229 because we blew away our modules before. <laughs> you see, you got to be careful for these things. So let's change that to huge. Save and run Lilo again. All right. And <laughs> I'm so careless today. There's no init rid either because that's not necessary for the huge kernel. Anyway, now that we've done that, run Lilo. And if you want to see again what the file should look like <laughs> after I made my mistakes and corrected them, there it is. Okay. Let's reboot now. Give it a moment. Okay. Now we can choose our two kernels using up and down. Let's choose our three, three, two, four, five. Make sure that it works. You'll note that our boot looks the same as it did before. There's been no radical change from the last one to this one. That's what I love about Slackware. Things don't change too, too much. They just improve. And there we are. We're in Slackware 3425. And I can log in as PopRox again. My usual password. Things seem to be working just fine. So now that I know I can boot the system, now I can go ahead edit my lilo.conf file, I can blow away this 3229 stuff, I can get rid of the 3245 label there, make it Linux again, save and quit, run lilo again, and now if I really want to be good about it, anything involving 3229, see what I have there, I can just blow it away, so rm-f star 3229 star and it's gone. So now we don't we don't have anything cluttering up our uh, our um, boot boot folder there. And uh, again, we've got our VM Linux, our init rid, and everything all switched over to three two four five, and our system is up and running. All right. I know I messed up a few times there. It was a bit of a sloppy recording, but we did get through it. We upgraded our kernel from 3229 to 3245, um, which is one of the more difficult upgrades to do within any Slackware system, or any Linux system, really. A kernel upgrades can always be a bit iffy. So we've done that. Um, so that completes our Slackware series, part two. Series two, rather. That completes it. Our next series will be upgrading, which is good timing because 14.1 just came out. And um, we're going to have some fun with that one. We're going to follow Patrick Volkerding's instructions on how to do it, and we're going to do it, and we're going to get through it. Um, so until then, this is Ellie Rathbone signing off. Good night and good luck.